I grew up in Moreno Valley, 55 miles east of LA in Southern California, in a ranch style home with clay, red tile roof and tan stucco exterior walls. I'm nine. And the youngest of four boys, Jeff is 14, Raulito is 17, and Ricardo, we call him Ricky, he's 22. Even though we're a biggish family, and I look up to all of my brothers, everyone's pretty busy, and I long for someone to connect with. My parents love me, but they work a lot. My dad, he works in a manufacturing plant as a maintenance mechanic. Recently, he was offered a job at the same company, but in New York. My parents say it's better pay and promises a better life for me and my brothers. But for now, it means my dad's always traveling back and forth from California to New York and back again. My mom, she also works a lot. She works at, at Open Bible Preschool. She sells Avon on the side. And she's going to school to get her uh, associate's degree. When she's not at work or school, she's dealing with my brothers, which leaves little time for me. I usually spend my time jumping down from the top bunk of the bed I share with Jeff to play with my WWF action figures yeah. on the salmon colored carpet floor of our bedroom. I'm pretty sure Jeff hates sharing a room with me. Partly because of all my toys, but also I like to sleep with the lights on. Aww. Aww. <laughs> also, when I'm trying to fall asleep, I turn on my prize stereo and listen to Michael Jackson, Madonna, New Edition, you know, all of the greats. <laughs> and also, last time I peed the bed was only a few years ago. <laughs> when I'm not outside making mud tacos or playing in, the, in our room, I curl up on the floor. I curl up into the smallest ball I can make of myself. And I think of how I might be related to Jesus Christ. How we all must be related to God. I try to remind myself I have plenty of good things to look forward to, and so I should feel grateful. Plus the fact that I have three older brothers who watch out for me and protect me when the challenges arise is certainly something to be happy about. Well, I guess I should say at this point, I have two brothers around since Ricky's been gone for a while. I want to be like Jeff and Raul when I grow up. I draw fake tattoos on my hands like theirs. And oh, when my mom sees it, sees what I have done, she has a fit. She says, quítate ese porquería. And immediately takes off her sandals, which in a Latino household, yes, you know it. In a Latino household, we affectionately refer to that as the chancla. <laughs> as for my oldest brother, it feels like only a few days ago when Ricky was babysitting me and taking me with him to see his friends, but he's been away for over a year now, maybe more. And deep inside, I'm missing him. I can't tell you where, where Ricky is. There's a code a code of the streets that lives inside of our home. We don't talk about those things. We don't rat each other out. And my family's just not the type of talk about your problems or your feelings kind of family. My family's more like the kind that says, mijo, don't worry so much about everything. Just find something that makes you happy. I try ignoring the challenges and finding things to make me happy. Like last year after... Mom slapped Ricky across the face and kicked him out of our house. They signed me up for kickboxing. Cool! <laughs> or when my brother Raul got into some kind of trouble, I got to spend all of winter break in Bakersfield with my friend Sean and his Mormon family. <laughs> cool! <laughs> As a result of that stifling your feelings approach, I process a lot in my dreams. On this particular night, I'm having one of my recurring dreams. I dream I'm lying in the top bunk and suddenly I'm running down a hallway trying to get away from some human-like monster 
who is this monster? What does it want from me? And, and why am I afraid of it? Is this some type of symbolic representation of the forces that came for Ricky and now they're coming for me? I'm in the midst of having this dream again when it's abruptly cut short. I wake up in a haze. Everything is a blur. I don't even know if Jeff is in our room. I can't make out the color of our carpet. I don't see my WWF wrestling action figures on the floor. I don't know if the nightlight or the stereo is on. I only start to gather my wits about me when Jeff appears out of nowhere and gently tells me to be quiet. It's in a surprisingly soft and caring way that he says, shh. It's almost as if he's consoling me. That gentle shh from my brother is all I can hold on to. I don't know when my parents left for work, but I notice they're gone. It's as if I'm still in a dream, fragmented reality into bits and pieces. I look up from my nine-year-old perspective. There seems to be hundreds of cops running through our home. I don't remember walking down the hall. Did my little body get lifted up out of bed and carried to the living room? Is that why my side feels slightly achy? I don't remember the moment that Raul got pushed up against the wall. But I see him there with a the cop yelling at him. It's loud. But I can't understand any of what is being said. I don't remember when they put the handcuffs on my wrists. I can only recall one police officer telling another, take the cuffs off of that kid. That kid. He means me. It's a reasonable request. I'm the youngest, but really we are all kids. Kids, 9, 14, 17 years old. I don't remember how that day ended or what happened the day after, but I know it changed me. I know many people would look at my brothers and find their situation less than desirable, less than desirable but I wasn't one of them. I just wanted to be like them, and eventually I did. End up using drugs, drinking, lots. Having a few of my own run-ins with the police. However, my family's decision to leave that booming town 55 miles east of LA in that neighborhood where we were one of 17 homes to be raided that day. That would be the choice that would not only change my life, but potentially save it. My father's job lined up in New York was what brought us east, but it was that love of my parents, they, that, that, it was the love that my parents had for us and their need for us to have more opportunities for a better life. That was the ultimate determining factor. It was that same unconditional love that, in my opinion, helped steer Jeff, Raul, and Ricky in, in the direction away from all the troubled kids like us found in Southern California in the late 80s. Now they all have their own full lives and loving families. So years ago, I went to my first yoga class. And when I got into that child's pose for the first time, it dawned on me. This is what I instinctively did as a kid to quiet my system and find my calm. I got on my knees. I curled into a ball, I got into that child's pose, and I connected with God. I've returned to this practice in my own way, but at this point it's no longer Catholic God or Jesus Christ, but something else more resonant with who I was becoming, and also maybe with who I've always been.